So how does hypochlorous acid kill bacteria, and why is it so efficient? That answer is coming up right now. Bacteria can exist in various shapes, like the rod, sphere, and spiral shapes you see here. But when it comes to disinfection, we're mainly only concerned about a specific dichotomy. And that is, are they gram-positive or gram-negative? Here is a clip I found online that shows a lot of intricate parts regarding the two types. It's highly detailed, but it's a bit of an eyesore. So let's simplify it with a less complex model that basically accomplishes the same thing. As you can see, both have a cytoplasm, a plasma membrane, a paraplasmic space, and a cell wall. The two main differences are that gram-positive have a thicker cell wall and gram-negative have an additional membrane surrounding it. The cell wall is made of a substance called peptidoglycan. Simply put, peptides are proteins and glycans are sugars. The cell wall provides structural support to withstand external forces and to protect its inner workings. The main goal of antimicrobials like disinfectants and even antibiotics is to break up the cell wall so the germ will implode or explode or to bypass it altogether so that we can do some different disruption inside the cell itself. Now that we've covered cell walls, let's switch to gram-negative and its additional layer. We're going to tackle this word together as well, lipopolysaccharide. Lipo means lipid or fat, poly means many, and saccharide is another word for simple carbohydrate or sugar. This additional membrane provides another form of protection, which makes gram-negative a little trickier to kill. In fact, some quaternary ammonium compounds can't kill gram-negative bacteria. Their words, not mine. But this is where it gets interesting. Within the outer lipopolysaccharide membrane, there are these little channel proteins called porin that contribute to something known as passive diffusion. They're basically like small tunnels. Passive diffusion allows certain molecular structures like oxygen and water, for example, to pass through without any energy required by the cell itself. What's important here is that these channels don't let things through that are either large in size or have a molecular charge. Well, let's consider our pal hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid is small, and I don't see any plus or minus signs on the HOCl formula. Do you? That's actually pretty convenient because when hypochlorous acid comes in contact with a germ, it just slips right in to wreak all sorts of havoc on the cell's DNA in the form of things like oxidation, DNA base modifications, strand breaks, and cross-linking. Those are all fancy terms for bad news bacteria. In contrast, hypochloride ions that are found in traditional bleach solutions have negative charges to them and will tend to repel. This requires an additional level of concentration to get the same level of efficacy. Large cationic quaternary ammonium compounds simply sit on the outer layer. This makes hypochlorous acid extremely efficient and why it's more effective than traditional bleach. That pretty much sums up this video. If you're interested in learning more about our on-site systems, our ready-to-use solutions, or even the science itself, feel free to reach out, and as always, thanks for watching.